good morning. And I want to encourage you this morning to love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul. And remember, He has a plan for your life. Um, and you'll never discover that plan unless you pursue the Lord and love the Lord and follow the Lord and ask God to guide and direct you. So I want to encourage you every day just to call out to the Lord. Let the Lord become your best friend. Um, instead of picking up the phone to call somebody else, um, call the Lord. Instead of thinking about somebody else first, think about the Lord first. The Lord has a plan for you and he wants you to think about him first. He loves you um, and he has the best plan for your life that anybody could ever have. So you might think your plan is good, but it's not as good as God's plan. Um, and he wants, to, he wants to take you and lift you up in that situation you're in this morning. I believe there's some people in some desperate situations that need a touch of the Lord. Um, and I want to encourage you to call out to the Lord. And you say, well, I've called out to God and it seems like it just goes against the ceiling. It just bounces right off the ceiling and comes right back to me. I want to tell you and assure you that God, God hears you and he loves you. And he has such a beautiful, beautiful plan of his great love for you. So I want to encourage you this morning. I want to pray for you this morning. And then I'm going to talk about God's plan just a little bit. Father, I just thank you for this wonderful day, Lord, to lift you up, to glorify you, to exalt your holy name, Lord, for you alone are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And Father, I just ask that you would guide and direct our footsteps today, Lord. Lord, that we could walk in your path, Lord, and know your path, Father, and stay on the straight and narrow path, Lord. Lord, and, and that you would guide and direct us as we follow you, Lord, and call out to you, Lord. And Lord, that there wouldn't be anything that would happen to us that would not be out of your plan, Lord. But we would be your perfect will for our lives this morning, Lord. I pray for those that are discouraged this morning and maybe struggling with um, relationship issues, struggling with work issues, struggling with financial issues, struggling with all different areas of life. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them today, Lord, to turn to you. And this message this morning would help them, Lord, to remember to focus on you and to turn to you and look to you in everything, Lord, and be encouraged in that in your precious holy name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you, and I'm going to talk this morning just a little bit about God's plan and God's plan for um, the, the captive Israelites, God always has a plan. There isn't anything that's going to take God by surprise. I don't care what you do, you're not going to surprise God. Um, the only person you're going to surprise is yourself. Because a lot of times, you know, you think, I didn't think I could do that again. Or I didn't think I could ever say that again. And you're surprised sometimes. I'm surprised sometimes that what pops into my mind or what maybe even pops out of my mouth. Um, and um, it's discouraging sometimes because you think I thought I got past that or I thought I, I was above that or I thought that I would never allow that to happen again and you find out that it happens again if your life isn't totally surrendered to the Lord and given to the Lord each and every day there's a possibility that you could do something that you used to do so I would encourage you just to give it to him and let him have your life every day Give it to him every day. Just lay it at his feet. Because why? Because he loves you. He's going to pick you up and he's going to breathe his life into you. He's going to encourage you and he's going to walk with you. I was at my mom's this last few days doing canning tuna and playing pinochle. I know some people think cards are really bad, but um, I'm not bothered by that. Anyway, I s stood in, her, in the bathroom, in the, the guest bathroom, and there was a poster up there called Footprints. Um, and it talks about... I'm walking in the sand with the Lord and, and how the Lord walked with this person. And he said he could see two sets of footprints throughout his whole life in this journey through the sand along the beautiful ocean side. I mean, he said, Lord, he said, I noticed that in the toughest times of my life and the, the deepest struggles of my life, that I only saw one, foot, one set of footprints walking in the sand. He goes, why was it that you left me at the deepest times of my life or the, the most difficult times of my life? And the Lord said to him, he said, my son, I love you. I would never leave you nor forsake you. In those times of difficulty, in those times of, um, um, that you thought I wasn't there, he goes, I was carrying you. I want to tell you, the Lord wants to carry you today. He wants to carry you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to breathe his life into you. He wants to love you. And there's times when we don't think that we can make it through life or don't make it through, won't make it through the struggles or the trials or the depths that God's taken us. But 
Um, he does. He's right there with you. He loves you. I want to encourage you this morning. I know there's some people listening today that are really struggling, but the Lord wants to just breathe his life into you, lift you up, fill you with his love, wrap his arms around you. He wants to carry you. He wants you to know how much you love him. You know, we, we know how much the world doesn't love us, and we know how much sometimes people don't love us, but God's not like people, and God's not like the world. Amen. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, throughout the word of God, there's always been a plan. I mean, if you, from Genesis to Revelation, there's a plan. God has a plan. I was listening to the radio on the way home from... Oregon yesterday, I was listening to um, um, just finding different pastors that were preaching or different talk shows, and there was one on that had Jim Elliott's wife, Elizabeth Elliott, and Jim Elliott was the one, that, the pilot that was killed um, in um, the tropics, and he was massacred, and um, his wife survived him and his daughter and, um, and the wives of the men that were killed, um, and she was on the radio show, and it was she was so full of grace and so full of peace. And I mean, she was talking about the plan of God for her life. And I was so touched by her testimony, because in her testimony, she said when she had heard that that Jim had been killed, I mean that he um, it was no longer with him. Um, she said, "I knew that this was not what I wanted. This was not my plan." And she said that she had um, a moment where she was struggling with that because she never planned for death. She only planned their life together in ministry. And she said, I had a choice to make. And she said, I could, I, I, at that moment, she said, I had to realize this was God's plan for my life and that this was the path God chose for me. And this is the path that was going to bring me close to him. And so she surrendered to God's will and she's been used powerfully for, well, that was 1957. So um, she's been over 50 years, over 60 years. She's been serving God, and she's written over 21 books. She's been around the world preaching and teaching and has been used of God. And she turned that defeat into victory um, and let the peace of God rule over her. And so we could fight what God's doing. We could fight what the plan of God. And some of us are like, this can't be your plan, God. I remember when my dad got killed. We were all, my mom and my, my aunt and um, myself, and I can't remember if there was anyone else, but there were the three of us at least there at our house at the time my father was killed in a helicopter accident. Um, and my mom picked up the phone and she said, you're kidding. You're kidding. Um, and she was deeply disturbed, but we didn't know what about. We were, we were sitting there just puzzled. Um, she got off the phone and she said that, um, that dad had gotten killed in a helicopter accident. Um, and it was such a shocking thing. But to watch my mom gracefully walk through life and to love the Lord and to follow the Lord and to embrace God's plan. And she had some difficult things and difficult choices to make. Um, she had um, um, alternatives to life, um, things that she could have chosen differently. But she chose to walk with God and she chose to serve the Lord. And the Lord has blessed her. Um, and she is um, a wonderful woman of God. Um, and she has been a blessing to many, many, many lives. And she has encouraged so many people. So we don't know what God's plan is. Um, you may be going through something devastating. Um, and you can't see the plan of God in this. But if we can allow the pain that you go through. And if you can allow the difficult things that you've gone through. That you don't think that you would even make it through. If you can embrace those and allow God to move in your life and to touch you. God will use you deeply. He will use you. He will use that. He will turn that around and he will use that. And the beautiful thing that um, um, Elliot, or Elizabeth Elliot said was that if we embrace the pain and we embrace those things, God often turns that around and draws us closer to him. So there is a plan. It's not just to make you go through a horrible, horrible life or to go through um, devastating circumstances or de devastating um, things in your life that would um, would uproot you and tear you apart. Um, if you press into God, they will bring the peace of God and the love of the Lord. And he loves you so much that he wants to be close to you. He loves you so much he wants to be close to you. Amen. Amen. Um, God is good. God is wonderful. And he loves you. Amen. He loves me. I've been through some devastating things in my life. I've done some stupid things in my life. I um, mean, God's turned those things around, and he's allowed me to be drawn close to him through those things. I want to read a passage of scripture this morning out of Jeremiah chapter 29. And 
at the end of this passage of scripture that I'm going to read, um, there's a, a, famous, a famous scripture that's quoted a lot. We see it on, on coffee mugs, and we see it on t-shirts, and we see it in posters, and we see it in PowerPoint sermons. And, um, and so you're going you're gonna to recognize that, that particular verse, but obviously they don't have all these 14 verses ahead of it. But I want to encourage you, there was a reason, and there's always a reason. So it says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1 to 14, Yep, that's a chunk of scripture. Jeremiah 29 says, Now these are the words of the, of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive to the priests, the prophets, and all the people from whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This happened after Je Je Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem and been taken into captivity. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, El the son of Shaphan, and Jamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, the king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. I want to say God had a plan, and God says, I caused them to be carried away. Why? Because they had turned away from the Lord and they turned their own plan and their own way and God was not pleased with that. So he said that they would be taken captive for 70 years. He said, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters Take and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may, be, they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city. I have caused you to be carried away captive. I want to say that again. And seek the peace of the city which I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace you will have peace. For thus says the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in the midst of you deceive you. Can prophets deceive you? Yes. Nor listen to your dreams which you have caught which you caused to, to be dreamed, for they falsely prophesied to in my name, and I have not sent them, says the Lord. So there are false prophets that come in that look like wonderful people, that look like godly people, that seem like they're all together with the Lord. And it's a, God says some of those people are false prophets. Do they come bearing truth? Yes, sometimes they come bearing truth, and sometimes we're taken captive by them because they have a good word, or they encourage you, or they lift you up, but there's something off of them. There's something that's wrong. And God says that there are false prophets that came in among them, um, to deceive them and to tell them words that were not from the Lord. Don't believe everything you hear, even if it sounds good. The word says to test the spirits. And so sometimes people come to you and they have a good word for you. But you're going, okay, that was good, but um, something doesn't feel right. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the checks in your spirit because God will always give you checks in your spirit. Okay, verse 10 says, For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God doesn't want to cause evil upon you. God doesn't want to bring evil upon you. His thoughts are for peace and for a future and for a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring, back from, bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to a place from which I will cause you to be carried away captive. In that passage of scripture, there's, there's certain points that God says, these are the things I'm going to do. This is the reason. These are the things I'm going to do. And I'm going to bring you back to a place of peace with me in the holy city. So God had a plan. So I want to give you seven reasons for Jeremiah's letter in this passage. And I'm not going to expound on these right yet. I'm just going to give you those seven and you can write them down. I'll read them twice for you so that you can write them down. One was to know that it was God's plan. <laughs> Seven reasons for Jeremiah's letter. This is written to the captives taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. The Israelites were carried from Jerusalem all the way to Babylon into captivity for 70 years. And the, this was the reason, seven reasons, to know that this was God's plan, 
Number two, to encourage them to find peace in their captivity. Not to fight it, but to, to know peace. Number three, to warn about false prophets among them that would try to deceive them. Number four, to give hope of, of a restor restoration. Number five, to demonstrate God's plan and that God had not turned a deaf ear to the captives. He said, I will again then hear you. There's a point in Isaiah where God says, I will not hear your, your prayers. And that is what it says, because, because of the iniquities. He said, because of your sin and because of your iniquities, I will not hear you. Does God still turn a deaf ear to us sometimes? I think sometimes he does. I think people have this misconception that God's just this ooey gooey lovey God that does anything. You can do anything you want, live any kind of crummy life you want, and God's just pleased with you and happy with whatever you do, and that's not true. Why would he, why would he say, those I love, I chastise. Those I love, I rebuke. Those I love, I warn. Those I love, um, I discipline. Why would he say that? Because we get off and God wants us to be on the right path and we make choices that are contrary to God. And so he, he takes measures to do what? To bring you back to him because he loves you. So if you're living a rebellious life or you're living in a, in a, in a life that is sinful, um, God's plan is to bring you out of that captivity. That is symbolic of your captivity. That is captivity. God wants to bring like the the cho or the children of Israel that were in captivity in Babylon. Sometimes we're in we're we're sitting right in Babylon in captivity and fighting God. Number six, that God would gather all the captives and bring them to His holy place, Jerusalem. That He was going to bring them back. That He would bring back. That He would restore. Number seven, um, where they are was not their home, just a place to keep keep doing life until they were called back. So. This letter to the captives of Israel was to show and demonstrate God's love through Jeremiah. Jeremiah the prophet came and encouraged those that were captive, that were held captive, to help them see the error of their way and their rebellion to God and to help them realize there's, there's always consequences. There's always consequences to our sin. And, um, and sometimes God, the word says that God's love, love covers a multitude of sins. So aren't you glad that you're not held, held responsible or you're not held to the consequences of some of the dumb things you've done, but God forgives you and he washes it clean and there aren't consequences that we have to, we, we don't have to live out. But sometimes there's, hor there's horrible consequences. Sometimes there's things we have to live with the, less, the rest of our life. I want to I wanna remind you again those seven reasons for Jeremiah's letter. One, to know this is God's plan. Sometimes God plans things that are not so fun for us, but they're for our better good, and they're to draw us. His plan is always, it's always to draw you to him. Number two, to encourage them to find peace in their captivity. Sometimes we feel like this is not the right, I, this is not what I want to be doing. This is not where I want to be. But sometimes you have to find peace in that. Maybe it's a job you're at, or maybe it's um, a place you're living, or maybe it's a relationship you have to find peace in. Number three, to warn, warn about false prophets among them that they would try to deceive them. Number four, to give a hope of restoration. Number five, to demonstrate God's plan and that God did not turn a deaf ear to the captives. Number six, that God would gather all the captives and bring them back to his holy place. Number seven, where they were at is not their ultimate home. It's just a place to keep doing life until they're called back. You might be going through something really deep in your own life. It might seem difficult or even impossible at times, but God has a plan for that in your life. You'll, I don't like God's plan. Well, there's things that I have not liked. I've been through a very difficult last year. Um, I've had um, um, a circumstance in my life, actually an um, uprooting of my whole life, that has been um, devastating. But God, had a, God has a beautiful plan even in that. And even in that, I had to embrace God's plan and come to a place of peace with the Lord in this. The pathway he chooses is often the one we wouldn't choose. I wouldn't choose what God chose for me sometimes. Right? Would you? No, sometimes we wouldn't. We don't want to. 
because it's not a fun path. Living for God isn't always fun. God doesn't guarantee us fun. God doesn't guarantee us joy, I mean, um, happiness. God doesn't guarantee us any secondary emotion um, in our life that um, is eternal. He, he, he does assure us of joy, of peace, of love, of long-suffering, of temperance, of patience, of, of faith. He guarantees those things if we follow him. So I can't say it's always been fun, but I can say I've had joy. I can't say it's always been the best or the best path I would have chosen, but it's the best path that God could choose. Amen. So I want to, I want to give you seven reasons to hold on to God's hope and plan. Seven reasons to hold on to God's hope and plan. And it's seven reasons um, for Jeremiah's letter, but I'm going to give them to you um, um, that would apply, how it would apply to your life right now. So number one, know that this is God's plan for your life. We often wonder, can this be God's plan? Would God do this? Would God allow? Oftentimes, some, some of the most devastating things in our life bring us to a place of surrender to the Lord and closeness, closeness with God. Most importantly, God wants to be close to you. God loves you. And he wants, he wants to transform your life and, um, and to allow you to walk in his total plan for you. That's so exciting. It's so difficult sometimes, but it's so exciting. Amen. Number two, to encourage you to find peace in your captivity. I'm not saying bondage. I'm saying captivity. And captivity might be, like I said, it might be a relationship. Maybe you're in a marriage that's difficult to live through. And you're like, you have been fighting it. You've been saying like, you know what? I would love to be married to anybody but this bonehead. I'd love to be doing something else or being with someone. Or maybe I would just like to be single because I hate my life. I want to encourage you to find peace where you're at. Find peace where you're at in, in the place where maybe it's a job you're at and you can't stand that job because your boss is a horrible person or somebody in there in the, um, the same business is a difficult person to be with and they're making life horrible for you. You have to find peace where you're at. Paul says, I've learned to be content where no matter where I'm at. Don't fight it. Um, it will bring peace to your life if you embrace it. It brings us to a place of closeness to the God. So I want to encourage you to find peace in that place where you feel like you're in captivity. Peace in that place um, and not, um, um, not rebel against or fight against it. Number three, to warn against false prophets among whom would try to deceive you. There will always be those who will think they know the best plan for your life and a better way for you. And so sometimes when you, when you find the peace of God, you, um, you're like, oh, okay, I found the peace of God. I'm embracing the peace of God. I feel like I'm right there. And you know what? Someone might come and say, no, that's not what God wants for you. This is what God wants for you. And it just turns you into, into turmoil. and starts like a whirlwind in your spirit because you know this is not what God wants. It sounds good. And people often say things nice to you or kind to you because they're trying to help you, encourage you. But oftentimes encouragement when it goes against God's plan for your life only causes strife. So I want to encourage you first off, to turn to the Lord and find God's plan for your life. And if it causes strife, give it to God. Um, and that might be a warning of the Holy Spirit that this is not your plan. And those, I want to also say, those that tend to be encouragers sometimes want to encourage people out of a hole um, because um, that's what's expected of them. But sometimes you got to let God do that work through them and stop trying to get them out of where God wants them to be. Stop bringing confusion into their life because you think you have a better plan than what God has and certainly God couldn't do that or wouldn't want to do that. I'm telling you, sometimes God chooses difficult paths. So we have to encourage them in their struggle or in their, in their place or in their place of captivity. Encourage them. God warns us. In Hebrews 1, 11, or 11, 7, it says, By faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen... Moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. God does warn us. Remember to obey the checks. One of the, one of the dear ladies in our congregation that I love, she's such a special friend of me, and her name is Dolly Green. Um, she said, boy, over the years, I've learned to obey the checks. When you get a check in your spirit, obey that check and don't let anybody talk you out of that. Amen. Number four, he wants to give you hope for restoration. God wants to restore. In Joel chapter two, it talks about the plan of God 
to restore what the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and um, those devouring insects came to do to destroy everything, which is symbolic of the demonic attack in our life to destroy everything. But God says he wants to give us restoration. He wants to restore those things that have been destroyed. He wants to restore your life that's been destroyed. He wants to redeem those things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five, to demonstrate God's plan that God not, has not turned a deaf ear to you in your captivity. In that place you feel like you're captive, God has not turned a deaf ear to you. He says, in fact, he says in his word, he would never leave you nor forsake you. Let him walk with you. Let him carry you. Let him bear the burden for you. He loves you. Amen. Number six, this was not their home. This is not your home. It's just a, it's just a place to keep doing life until they're called back. You know, people called me, or one lady called me. She came into my office and she says, I don't like it when people preach about the rapture because I preached about the rapture one Sunday. And I said, well, did I use any scriptures that weren't right? She said, no. I said, did I say something that was against the Bible? She said, no. I said, did I, did I preach anything that was really contrary to the word of God? No. I said, well, why? And she said, well, I don't like it when people preach that because all they're preaching is a, a, an escapism mentality. I don't agree. I think it's great hope. I'm not trying to escape what God put us here for. Um, we're supposed to, I believe we're supposed to enjoy life here. We're supposed to enjoy each other. We're supposed to be full of joy. And um, we're supposed to walk in that, in the, in the precious spirit of God. We're supposed to embrace what God has for us. But there's a deep, deep hope in our hearts that someday Jesus is going to come back and he's going to take us home to be with him. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm excited about that. I mean, I think about that all the time. I write songs about that. I love that. Why? Because um, I have one song called, um, This Is Not My Home. I'm going home. Um, and that's true. This is not the place that is called my home. I'm just passing through. But in the meantime, I'm going to live peaceably in that place of captivity. I'm going to live peaceably in this place um, and do everything the Lord wants me to do. Amen? And number seven, that God would gather all the captives and bring them back to his holy place, Jerusalem. The word says, at the end of time, that holy city, the new Jerusalem, is going to come out of, out of heaven. I don't know what it's going to be like because it's, it's, it's enormous. It's going to come out of heaven and set down on earth. And the Lord's going to rule and reign from there. And you and I are going to be a part of that. So it's amazing. What's God's plan for your life? Don't fight it. Um, what's God's plan for your future? Don't fight it. What's God's um, ultimate plan um, is going to be worked out in your life each and every day. I mean, there's going to be some difficult paths that God's going to choose. I know that's not a happy word, but it's a great word because when you go through it, you're going to like, you know, I remember that. I remember what God said in his word, and this is his plan for my life. I have to embrace it. Amen. And it's going to be difficult. Um, and so I'm going to encourage you just to keep your eyes focused on Jesus, love him with all your heart, and glorify the Lord. He loves you. Amen. I want to pray for you one more time. Amen. Thinking about that, there might be something in your life where you're where you're fighting it, and you're saying, "I don't like that. I don't want to be. The, I don't want that to happen in my life. I I I just can't. Um, I can't walk through this life like that." But let God, the Holy Spirit, carry you through. Amen. So, Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for your people, Lord, and those Lord that have not made a decision yet for you. Lord, I pray that you would break the chains off them, Lord, so that they could see clearly that you would give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they would know what the hope of their calling is and what the exceeding greatness of their God is towards those who believe. God, break the chains off in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those things, Lord, that are difficult we're going through, Father, and we don't, think we, can, we don't think we can make it through, give us the strength to do what you want us to do. Give us the strength, Lord, to, to walk through that, Father, in the name of Jesus. The endurance and the perseverance and the steadfastness and the faithfulness to you, Lord, that needs to happen, Father, in our hearts and our lives so that we can cling to you, Lord, in the precious holy name of Jesus. And I want to encourage that person that's struggling right now. God might be talking to you right now and saying how much he loves you. And you haven't heard that for years, but God loves you. He might, you might not have heard that for years. And maybe there was a time when you, when you, um, when you even felt special to the Lord, but you've fallen away from God and you're walking in a dark place right now. God wants to deliver you from that place right now in the name of Jesus. He wants to set you free in the name of Jesus. 
so that you could be lifted up with him and live a, a life that is full and rich and full of his joy and peace. In the name of Jesus, he loves you. Amen. Amen. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, just break that chain off that person right now. And God, draw them to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor in your holy name, Lord. Amen. Well, I love you and God loves you. And I hope you have a great day and that you are encouraged to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus even through the difficult things you're going through because he loves you. Amen. Amen.